Okay, so here we go again. At the end of my last video, I was determined to get over to Unreal Engine 5 with my existing project. Uh, my issue is that I had accidentally updated a plugin way earlier than I should have, and I just needed to update some things. A uh, quick word of the wise, back up your projects. I know everyone says it, I didn't, and it caused a problem. But at the end of the day, it led me to reparenting my characters, which worked great, but now a lot of my character movement settings were gone. Luckily, a lot of that info was being updated in blueprints, so I can just get my settings from there, and that's what I ended up doing. And that's when the real fun started, and Unreal made a bunch of changes unbeknownst to me. I noticed that my Civ AI was ignoring the nav mesh. Uh, turns out the AI controller class defaulted to AI controller instead of the one I had set up. It wasn't great that they walked backwards, but ignoring the yaw fixed that one for me. I was able to get the enemy AI to work the same way, with a few glaring issues. It also had the problem of ignoring the nav mesh, but that's because can be main nav data unchecked itself. I don't know why. Also, some of the events renamed themselves, but not the references I made to them. So I'd call out to things like jump and it wouldn't work. So I had to go back and delete the new events and just rename the old ones back to how they were before. Once that was finished, I backed up my project, like an adult, and made the jump to Unreal Engine 5. And of course, the first thing I noticed was that crazy amount of wind on my cape, and that the nav meshes didn't work again. But there were other issues with the cape too. And if you saw my last video, the cape was a major issue, so it was time to debug that. And actually with that, it might be a good time to explain how I got my 3D cape to align with my 2D image. So I'm essentially doing forced perspective photography. You know when people take a picture of them holding the Leaning Tower of Pisa? That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm placing two versions of my cape about a virtual foot in front of and behind my character and just switching between them. I have points on my spine character for the two points of the cape. Where it gets tricky is when the camera starts moving around. That's when I sort of do that trick that they did in the Lord of the Rings movies where they slide foreground and background elements so they always kind of line up with the camera. To do that, I use a ray trace from the camera to the points on the player where the cape should go. I undershoot and overshoot for the locations, then I update those bones in Unreal Engine's animation system on the actual cape, and it keeps the points where they should attach to the character right where they need to be. It took some digging. Of course, nothing changed in the actual bone animation. It should have worked, but I turned one of the points on the messed up cape off, and that worked. I'm not gonna keep like that forever, but it's working for now. And next was the fun part. I could finally start playing around with the lighting. I wanted to add more interest to the backgrounds because they all felt like looking at a big grid. So I created giant blocks and angled the lights to give me long diagonal shadows that would cast across the buildings and the roads. Last but not least was taking advantage of Paper ZD's multi-directional animation system. And oh my gosh, I wish I had this a long time ago. Originally, I had an overcomplicated system to fire off the animations, and plotting this in Paper ZD was so much easier. Now I did actually make this one a little more complicated than I needed to at first. When going from the hovering to the fast animations, I have a starting animation for every angle that goes into a looping flight animation for all the angles. When you transition from that into hovering, you play a slowing down animation that goes to the hovering one once finished. At first I tried creating notifies that would trigger at the end of the starting animations that would kind of allow you to go into the looping directional animations. What I didn't realize is that Paper ZD has a system for transitional animations and it works awesome. So that's it for now. Like always, please like and subscribe and check the bell to make sure you're notified when more videos drop. And feel free to add a comment underneath the video with any questions you may have.